Is it possible to restore a classic and retain its essence? Today, I won't be bringing you any fishing or outdoor adventures on my Lexus GX460. Instead, I've decided to take a closer look at this gorgeous Toyota Land Cruiser FJ40. Yes, I did refer to an FJ40 as gorgeous, but you may hear me use other descriptors such as exquisite, magnificent, and lovely. This particular FJ40 belongs to a friend who appreciates timeless and iconic vehicles. I want to thank him for trusting me with this one-of-a-kind beauty. I plan on showing you all of the special details and then walk you through my experience as I drive it around town. What we have here is a 1982 Toyota FJ40 reimagined by the craftsmen at Legacy Overland. They are based out of Connecticut but have a shop in Portugal as well. Portugal is where this FJ40 was found. However, it started life as a BJ40 with a small displacement, four-cylinder diesel engine. Legacy Overland specializes in the restoration of classic Toyotas and Range Rovers. I will leave links in this video's description if you want to learn more. Before I get into the details of the FJ, I must confess I have a personal connection to these vehicles. As a child, my brother and I would accompany our mother to Nuevo León, Mexico, where we would visit our grandparents. The poorly maintained dirt roads were nearly impossible to drive on, but it was a BJ40 that would help us reach grandma's ranch. My brother Rick and I would ride on the jump seats as we would cross creeks and traverse through rough terrain. So my first ride on a four wheel drive was in a Toyota Land Cruiser. The FJ we have here is slightly different from the old BJ40 we rode in back in the day. To start off, the drivetrain has been upgraded with a brand new carbureted GM 5.7 V8 made it to an automatic 700 R4 four-speed gearbox, giving this little off-roader plenty of power. Mechanical upgrades abound throughout the build, including all-around disc brakes, old man emu suspension components, terrain tamer gas shocks, a custom-built fuel tank, power steering, and a complete rewiring of the system. Great care and painstaking attention to detail was obviously applied by the Legacy Overland Craftsman. This vehicle was taken completely apart, the interior was gutted, the body sandblasted, and every inch was restored to better than new condition. Think about that, every single bolt and nut was removed, restored, and or replaced. The man hours invested in this project is truly astonishing. The body was painted a desert storm tan and the underbody is protected by coats of Raptor paint. The roof maintains its white color, a classic staple of hardtop FJs. There are so many tasteful little details such as a color matching jerry can, the high lift jack, and even the chrome hood little latches. The headlamps are LED for a safer driving experience at night. The 16 inch steel wheels are just right with their simple chrome OEM hubcaps and meaty BF Goodrich MTKM3s at 285-75R16s. The spare tire sits as it should and a swing out carrier in the rear. Move the spare tire out of the way and open the cool looking ambulance style doors to reveal the highly detailed interior. These are the jump seats that I'm talking about where my brother and I would uh, sit right here. Each one right here, going down that bumpy road, going over creeks. It was so awesome, it was so awesome. Of course, I don't know, uh, this is uh, very beautiful. This is very nice. So I don't know if I'd be uh, messing around with this one. The cargo area has foldable bench seats with lap belts, while the original bucket seats up front have been handcrafted in black vegan with micro perforated sections. The seats and center console are piped in desert tan, so opening the door will let you know this isn't your average classic Land Cruiser. Luxury features such as an under dash air conditioning unit is a must in the southern states. The dashboard is a joy to look at with those old style knobs, the radio looks vintage, but it has Bluetooth and satellite radio with a magnificent speaker system. The vehicle was designed with modern needs in mind, so they even added a USB charging port. Now come take a ride with me and let's see what it's like to drive a fully restored and tastefully resto modded Toyota FJ40. We got the keys. Here you go. 
Legacy Overland, right here. Uh, I'm nervous. Mm -hmm. Try one. Oh, give it a little gas. It's carbureted. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Remember, this is a 5.7 liter V8 engine that we have here. Oh, it's got a little, little get up and go here. <laughs> but it, it does not inspire, it already does not inspire a lot of confidence to go fast in this thing. Of course, it wasn't designed for that, but uh, everything is where it's supposed to be, where I expect it to be. Um, the turn signal, let's see if I can get in through here. And uh, I'm a little extra nervous because I don't even want to tell you how much this thing costs, but uh, I'm sure it's not cheap. Even uh, a simple, a simple FJ40 is expensive. An unmolested one. I can only imagine how this thing, how much this thing costs. I'm ah, doing about 30 miles an hour. It feels, uh, feels good actually. Steering is super light. The seats are very comfortable, very plush, very comfortable. I'm a very short guy, so the pedals are pretty much perfect for me. Uh, but I can only imagine if you are a taller individual, you might want to have some distance between uh, you and the pedals here because they are kind of tight. They're kind of up here. Right now, it's about you know, high 50s, you know, here in the Rio Grande Valley, deep South Texas. Um, a cold front just blew in. This is not typical weather. It's normally warmer. So it is important to have your air conditioning running or have a vehicle with air conditioning around here. And uh, this vehicle is equipped with one and it is also equipped with a heater. You know, I've been trying to take care of myself trying to look out for my health and so we got to go get a keto meal right now let's go pull up and get a keto meal before we start continuing with the video so i traded the lexus for this thing what do you think did i screw up nice. you think this is better than the lexus Absolutely. she's lying <laughs> the lexus is better <laughs> not sure what keto is or how it works listen to what the experts at the men clinic have to say hello my name is rodolfo suarez and i'm here at wellness health group in the men clinic i'm going to quickly go over the ketogenic diet so what we're trying to do with this diet is we're trying to limit your carb intake there's a very important hormone called insulin and what insulin's job is is to convert carbs and turn it into body fat when we limit your carb intake, your body starts looking for a new source of energy. What it starts to do is it actually starts burning body fat and turning it into ketones. And that's where the ketogenic diet gets its name. By doing this, your body is able to burn a large amount of fat very quickly. And that's essentially how the ketogenic diet works. Yes, I'm eating my meal out here. I'm not gonna do it inside the vehicle. And yeah, it is keto, check it out. Pretty cool, huh? Check out the cup holder. The cup holder is functional. I mean, I wouldn't put anything, hell, I, would, I shouldn't be putting anything in there anyway, but look at this. Just wanted to show, maybe if the sleeve didn't exist, it would actually go all the way in. Yeah. But it does have that cup holder. And this is a shifter right here. So, pretty much you press a little button here. All right, it's in gear. Jesus help us, please don't let me have a mishap in this gorgeous, magnificent, lovely, beautiful, exquisite, tender, loving vehicle here. 
Oh my god! Alright! So, it's got a full tank, and I have a full tank because I just enjoyed a lovely keto uh, meal right now. And uh, yeah, this is doing about 30 miles an hour right here. And this thing is, let me put it to you this way I would not be, you know, straightening any curves with this vehicle right here. All right? You know, I'm going to go with uh, take it easy mode for many, many reasons. One of them is this thing hasn't been broken in yet. Okay? This thing is in pretty much brand new condition, guys. Uh, we're at 811 kilometers that's what we got on the odometer oh here we go so the goal is to try to take it on the highway here and see how it performs signals everything works well I don't know man I'm thinking of maybe putting down this camera if it's already there's a lot of play here there's a lot of play on this uh, on this steering wheel, you know? But uh, if this continues, if it's a little nastier on the highway, I will not, I will definitely not be using it. I am out in the wild, the wild streets of McAllen, Texas. Let me see here. Oh, we're doing this. I can't believe my friend uses this to commute every day. You know, the guy, he, he probably has a lot of adventure inside of him, you know? Just needs to release it. Or maybe this is escape, you know? I don't know his, you know, 10 minute commute, 15 minute commute. I don't know, maybe that's where he gets his thrill. <laughs> so check it out. We're about to merge into traffic right here. And uh, yeah, we're gonna be hitting that highway. How does it feel inside? It feels like a normal vehicle, pretty much. It is, it ra there's a lot of rattling going on and uh, you know, so obviously this is not the Lexus, but whoever's, oh, I might wanna shut this a little bit more. Maybe, <laughs> maybe that's why it doesn't sound so refined. I am not gonna be doing anything crazy here. We want to uh, respect someone else's property here, especially when it's my dear friend who has other cool cars that depending on how this one goes, he might allow me to do a review on those too. I'm flowing here. Get out of my way, I'm driving. I'm driving a 1982 Toyota Land Cruiser. J40 Legacy Overland Yeah These by the way Don't freak out guys You're not looking at eight, I'm not doing 85 miles an hour Alright I'm not doing 85 I'm doing 80 I'm going to let you in On the little secret also You guys don't have We don't have smell of vision yet Right But I can tell you That can smell you can smell the fuel you can smell some of the fuel but the charm the charm the I don't know how to call it, the, the nostalgia you know it's incredible and here's another thing that's dear to my heart what's dear to my heart is that almost 40 years ago when I was a child first 4x4 I ever got on was a Toyota Land Cruiser BJ40, right? And um, of course I was riding in the jump seats back there. I wasn't riding up in the front. I certainly wasn't driving it. I would have never imagined that I would be driving such a vehicle in the future. Especially one that's been so meticulously, meticulously cared for such as uh, this vehicle that I'm driving. I'm so honored, man. I'm so honored. I'm so happy. You can probably tell, right? You know, the vehicle's not over the top at all. It's very 
refined. It's very, uh, you know, for what it is, right? It is uh, also uh, very tasteful. I think they did a very nice job. My hat's off to the artisans, the craft craftsmen at uh, Legacy Overland, man. You guys are great. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for restoring these vehicles. And uh, I'm glad that there's a market for them. I, I hope more people decide to, you know, go ahead and uh, and continue to buy these type of vehicles and and uh, kind of keep them alive, so that maybe future generations can enjoy them. And my hats off to the guys who have them unrestored, who work on them themselves, and uh, who wheel them, right? That's pretty gutsy, man. You're you're wheeling a, you know, grandma's heirloom. <laughs> you're you're uh, wheeling something very special, you know. And unfortunately, and I will be honest, I, 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 my intention was not to come out and I'm not gonna take it off roading, guys. Would I do it if I owned this thing? A little bit, a little bit, nothing crazy, but I would take it off road, just a little bit. You know, I think uh, I think everything can be fixed. It would hurt me. It would hurt my feelings. You know, I wouldn't want to damage this bad boy. But at the same time, you know, there's something pretty cool about you know not just giving it life, but also uh. I don't know, using it for what it was meant to be used. Oh yeah. Loving this. The brakes, guys, the brakes are awesome. Um, nothing, no smooshiness, no, nothing weird, nothing like that. Let's see what's going on here. Uh-huh. Going up to the work site. This is what they would have normally been doing back in the day. Man, my friend's gonna kick my butt. My friend's gonna kick my butt when he knows, when he finds out, when he watches a video and sees that I actually took it on dirt. Don't hate me. Don't hate me. But this is necessary. Because you see, this is what I think. I think that at one point, I think uh, a lot of these vehicles were used uh, by ranchers, obviously, you know, farmers, you know, people who live in the rural areas, landowners, right? You know, but uh, I think uh, they were also very useful for architects, uh, engineers, anyone like that. And of course, I'm. Uh, looking after this uh, little work site over here. So let's get some video and uh, I'm gonna get back to uh, what I'm supposed to be doing actually. Check out these plans, check out this work site. Beautiful place. By the way, this is a Thurman Eye Associates Clinic in Mission, Texas that is getting built over here at the corner of Trinity and Bryan Road. Very convenient. Do you like the plug? A little shameless? I don't care, whatever. What a truly amazing machine. I wonder if the original designers realized how much joy these utilitarian machines would bring so many people around the world. I'm sure my little story isn't a unique one and the Toyota Land Cruiser has brought people together without even realizing it. My respect goes out to Legacy Overland and the people who fork out the funds to restore and maintain these gems. If you made it this far in the video, it's safe to say you're a car enthusiast please consider subscribing to my humble channel, comment, and hit the like button. Did you enjoy this particular video? Let me know in the comments below. A huge thanks once again to my buddy for allowing me to drive this beautiful vehicle of his. Thanks for watching. Now get up, get out, and do something.